Various methods have been developed to ascertain the changes in appearance to a textile or apparel item during cleaning. The appearance may change due to the inherent abrasion that occurs during laundering and drying. As a result of this abrasion, the surface may become fuzzy or pilled and the appearance of the color may also be affected. The appearance of a product may change in terms of wrinkling. The consumer hopes that the appearance of the garment will be smooth and free of wrinkles, and if a pleat or crease is desired in the product, that they will not be removed in the cleaning process. Often the desired performance may not be met. AATCC test method, Smoothness Appearance of Fabrics After Repeated Home Laundering, is designed to allow for an appraisal of the smoothness of the fabric after at least three cycles. The test procedure is designed to reflect the capabilities of home laundry equipment, which is currently used by consumers. In general, it's preferable to conduct the test under relatively severe laundering conditions. Any washable fabric may be evaluated for smoothness appearance using this method. This includes knit, woven, and non-woven products. The fabric specimens are subjected to standard home laundering practices. From these, a choice of hand or machine washing can be used. Machine washing uses a standardized automatic washer with water level and temperature control for the washing and rinsing cycles. The washer is set for a selected washing cycle and time. Normal or cotton sturdy is recommended. Exact temperature control can be achieved by use of systems to blend the hot and cold water to ensure the correct temperature as well as the amount of water indicated for the load size. For very critical evaluations and in arbitration, the number of specimens per washer load should be limited to those from one sample. An AATCC standard detergent, powder or liquid, is used. Water softness can have an impact on the amount of detergent used due to sudsing. Hand washing uses a standardized 10-quart pail along with three fabric test specimens. A prescribed amount of AATCC standard reference detergent, powder or liquid, is dissolved in two gallons of water in the pail at a temperature of 105 degrees Fahrenheit plus or minus 5 degrees. The specimens are washed for two minutes without any twisting or wringing. A single rinse follows. and then the specimens are removed and drip-dried. In addition to the standardized equipment and detergents, the test method requires standard-sized samples and ballast fabric. Three representative fabric specimens of about 15 by 15 inches 38 by 38 centimeters are cut parallel to the fabric length and width. Where possible, each specimen should contain different groups of lengthwise and widthwise yarns. The specimens should be marked to indicate the lengthwise direction. If fraying is expected in laundering, the edges of the specimen should be hemmed with a specified sewing stitch. The prepared specimens are washed to the standard in a load size of 4 pounds, 1.8 kilograms, including any ballast needed. Sets of three specimens are weighed along with the ballast. Ballast for the wash loads is clearly specified as to size and fabric type. The washer is filled with 18 gallons of water at the specified temperature. The water temperature can be measured by hand or controlled by the use of a microprocessor control that automatically blends the hot and cold water to the desired temperature. The detergent is added while the washer is filled with water. After filling with water and adding the detergent, the specimens are added along with the proper ballast, as indicated by the test method. The ballast pieces are cut to a 36-inch square. The washing cycle is 12 minutes, followed by extraction, rinsing, and extraction. If the specimens are to be tumble-dried, allow washing to proceed automatically through the final spin cycle. Remove the test specimens immediately after spinning, separate tangled pieces, taking care to minimize distortion, and dry to the specified temperature. For fibers that are heat sensitive, lower temperatures consistent with producer's recommendations are required and must be reported. Operate the dryer until the total load is dry. Remove the load immediately after the machine stops. Over drying must be avoided. The small size of the specimen will occasionally cause wrinkles or creases in the dryer. 
These effects are not considered to be characteristic of fabric performance in actual care and use. Precautions are given in the test method to reduce the occurrence of dryer creases. For specimens to be drip dried, remove the specimens from the washer just before the water begins to drain for the final rinse cycle. The soaking wet specimens are hung with the fabric length in the vertical direction. If washer creases or folds have occurred, they should be removed by hand prior to drying. Care should be taken not to stretch or distort the specimen. Allow the specimens to hang in still air at room temperature until dry. When line drying is chosen, the specimens are carefully removed from the washer after the final spin cycle and hung for drying. Hang each fabric specimen by two corners with the fabric length in the vertical direction. Allow specimens to hang in still air at room temperature until dry. Screen or flat drying is often specified for heavy sweaters and dresses that would be likely to elongate if hung to dry. Spread each specimen on a horizontal screen or perforated surface, removing wrinkles but not distorting or stretching the specimen. Allow the specimen to dry in still air at room temperature. After drying and prior to evaluation, the specimens are hung vertically on a wire for conditioning. The time, temperature, and relative humidity required are clearly stated in the ASTM test method D1776, Standard Practice for Conditioning and Testing Textiles. This is covered in the section Conditioning on this CD. Notice that this assembly allows for many specimens to be hung in a relatively small floor space. The evaluation area must have standardized lighting and other physical assets. This drawing from the AATCC test method shows the typical specification for an evaluation room. Clearly shown is the viewing board, the angle of the viewing board, the distance from the board the rater stands, and other important dimensions for viewing. Also, the color of the rating board should be painted to match the number two gray chip on the AATCC grayscale for staining. Evaluation rooms are preferred. If an evaluation room is not available, the area must be illuminated only with proper overhead lighting. The test method specifies the proper lighting and the location of the lighting overhead of the viewing board. It has been the experience of many observers that light reflected from the side walls near the viewing board can interfere with the rating results. Therefore, it's recommended that the side walls be painted a specified matte black. Blackout curtains may be mounted on both sides of the viewing board to eliminate any reflective interference. The rating evaluation for the specimens should be made by three trained observers. The observers should rate each test specimen independently. Overhead fluorescent lighting should be the only light source for the viewing board. All other lights in the room should be turned off. Each observer should stand directly in front of the specimen at a distance of four feet away from the viewing board. Specimens should be mounted on the viewing board with the fabric length in the vertical direction. The most similar three-dimensional plastic replicas should be placed on each side of the test specimen to facilitate comparative rating. Although the 3D smoothness appearance replicas were cast from woven fabrics, it's understood that these wrinkled surfaces do not duplicate all possibilities of fabric surfaces. The replicas are to be used as guides, which represent various levels of fabric smoothness or freedom from wrinkles. The observer should mentally rate the degree and frequency of wrinkles in the specimen to determine a level of smoothness that can be identified with the replica number which most nearly represents that smoothness appearance level of the specimen. The numerical grade of the replica which most nearly matches the smoothness appearance of the test specimen is assigned. A grade midway between those whole number standards can be assigned if the appearance of the test specimen warrants it. The replica grades range from a rating of 1 to a rating of 5. A replica of 1 represents a very poor appearance that is crumpled, creased, and severely wrinkled. A grade of 3 represents some must, non-pressed appearance. 
A grade of 5 represents a very smooth, pressed, and finished appearance. If laundering creases are present on any specimens to be evaluated, take care in rating the specimens. Some laundering creases can be disregarded. After the ratings have been made, a report is issued giving the average of the nine observations made on each test fabric, three grades on each of three test specimens. The average is reported to the nearest tenth of a grade. This average is the unit of measure of this test method. Other data is reported as required, including the washing and drying procedures, the detergent used, powder or liquid, the wash cycle, and other criteria indicated in the test method. Besides smooth drying characteristics, in many garments there are creases, pleats, etc., that are desired to have permanence throughout the life of the garment. In addition, for shirtings, it's desired to have not only fabric that launders smooth, but the collars, plackets, and seams must also be smooth. AATCC Test Method 143, Appearance of Apparel and Other Textile End Products After Repeated Home Laundering, covers these appearance characteristics. This test method is designed for evaluating the smoothness appearance of apparel and other textile end use product. These non-apparel products would be sheets, blankets, and other various home products. Within these products, fabric areas, seams, and the retention of pressed in creases are evaluated for durability and appearance. Any washable textile end product made from woven, knit, or non-woven fabric may be evaluated for smoothness appearance seam smoothness, and crease retention using this method. The same laundering techniques discussed in the durable press segment of this section are pertinent to these evaluations. Choices are provided in the test method for hand or machine washing, alternative machine wash cycles and temperatures, and alternative drying procedures. After drying the final cycle and prior to the evaluation, the garments are carefully removed from the dryer and hung for conditioning as required by the standard. The smoothness appearance of a garment refers primarily to the smoothness of its fabric. It's the visual impression of a flat portion of the garment, usually the front, back, and sleeves. The same standard replicas used in AATCC Test Method 124 are used for this evaluation. For smoothness appearance of a garment, Mount the specimen on the viewing board with the garment length in the vertical direction. Place the most similar three-dimensional plastic replicas on each side of the test specimen to facilitate comparative rating. In this example, a long-sleeved dress shirt is placed on the viewing board with the back of the shirt out. The sleeves are placed between the front of the shirt and the board to expose the largest area possible on the back of the shirt. The replicas for evaluation are selected by the observer. The rater then determines a numerical grade of smoothness from the replica that most nearly matches the smoothness appearance of the test specimen. It should be noted that prints and patterns may mask the mussiness present in the textile product. Seam smoothness refers to the visual impression of the seamed area only of a product compared to a set of reference standards. The observations are not to be influenced by the fabric areas surrounding the seam. On blouses, sports, and dress shirts, seams are found where the sleeves are sewn into the body of the shirt, at the placket, the hem, and if the shirt has a pocket, there will also be a seam around the pocket. Depending on the styling of the shirt, there may be other seams. The garment is laundered as prescribed by the test method and hung for conditioning. For evaluation, the test specimen is mounted on the viewing board with the seam to be evaluated in the vertical direction. Place the appropriate single or double needle standard seam smoothness replicas beside the specimen to facilitate comparative rating. Assign the numerical grade of the photographic standard which most nearly matches the appearance of the seam in the test specimen. A seam smoothness grade of 5 is equivalent to the appearance of the standard number 5, which is the best level of seam appearance. A seam smoothness grade of 1 is equivalent to that of standard number 1, which represents a very poor level of seam appearance. The shirt placket is rated not only for the smoothness of the flat areas, but also for the seamed edges. This blue dress shirt is mounted on the viewing board with the closest pair of replicas mounted on the top of the shirt on either side of the placket for rating.
Please notice that the replicas are photographs that clearly represent the level of performance indicated on the replica. The replica on the left is a 4.0 rating and the one on the right is a 3.0 rating. The photographic standards for shirt placards are covered in ASTM test method D4231 and the replicas are available from ASTM. The scale ranges from a rating of 1 to 5. A 5.0 rating represents a very smooth, pressed, and finished placket. A 3.0 rating represents a must, puckered, and non-pressed appearance. A 1.0 rating represents a very crumpled and severely puckered appearance. The poor appearance of a pocket can ruin the overall appearance of a shirt. Replicas are also used for the evaluation of the pocket. Again, the rating scale is from 1 to 5, with 5 being excellent. A rating of 5.0 represents a pocket with a sewn edge that is perfectly flat with no puckering. The pocket fabric also has a well-pressed appearance with no mussiness. A rating of 3.0 has some puckering of the sewn edges and mussiness of the pocket fabric. A rating of 1.0 shows severe puckering of the sewn edge, which affects the surrounding fabric of the shirt and the pocket. As with a poor pocket, a poor performing shirt collar can ruin a shirt. The shirt collar has multiple layers of fabric and in some cases has some type of interfacing fabric to give the collar body, to keep it flat, and to prevent curling. The collar is rated under controlled conditions, lighting, and against standardized replicas. These photographic standards are available through ASTM. The replicas are valued from 1 to 5 with a rating of 5 being a perfect value. A 5.0 represents no seam puckering at the outside or neck edges of the collar. Also, the fabric has a perfectly pressed appearance. A 3.0 rating shows some mussiness of the collar and some puckering at the outside and neck edges of the collar. The crease retention of a fabric or garment is the visual impression of an inserted crease that can be quantified by comparison with a set of reference standards. Creases in fabrics and garments can be rated using AATCC test methods. As stated, AATCC test method 143 is for apparel and other end products made of textiles. AATCC test method 88C, retention of creases in fabrics after repeated home laundering, is also used and primarily in the development of crease retention finishes at the mill. In this scenario, only pant legs are evaluated to save on the amount of fabric used. Regardless of the test chosen, the evaluation procedures follow washing, drying, hanging, and conditioning. After conditioning, the specimens are mounted on the viewing board with the crease in the vertical direction. The most similar three-dimensional plastic crease replicas are placed on either side of the specimen to facilitate comparative rating. A major difference between rating of crease retention from other appearance ratings is that a flood lamp with a reflector and a light shield are positioned in the viewing area. This illustration shows that the floodlight and the reflector are to the side of the viewing board and the radar. The flood lamp casts a direct light onto one side of the creased specimen, thereby casting a shadow on the other side of the crease. This assists the radar in making a more accurate rating. Only the sharpness of the crease should be evaluated with the surrounding fabric appearance being disregarded. As with other appearance ratings, a numerical grade of the replica which most nearly matches the appearance of the crease in the test specimen is recorded. The replicas range from 1.0 to 5.0 with ratings of 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, and 5.0. A crease retention grade of 5.0 is the best level of crease appearance and has a very sharp and distinct crease. A crease retention rating of 3.0 represents a slightly creased appearance, and a crease retention grade of 1.0 represents no physical crease.